Alright. So I'm doing homeless person profile. You guys should know my name by this part of the year. If you don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we're gonna start off with a woman named Lena's story. So fun stuff. I don't know why I did that. I was just thinking. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Her name is Lena. I'm gonna wait till it's quiet. Alright, her name is Lena. Um, she actually works at Target currently. And when Mr. Wilson said homeless, I did not think of somebody who begs people for money. I thought of somebody who, like, just the homeless you guys don't hear about on a daily basis. So, she got in a fight with her father, and she decided that after the fight, even if she wasn't it, like if she left her house and she wasn't going to be stable, she'd at least be happy. So her quote says, I would rather be happy and struggling than unhappy and stable, and it was the best decision I've ever made. Yeah. She's really great. All right, cool. Her struggle, before she became homeless, she was stable, had a steady job. She was on track to graduate. She stayed at home with her dad all her life, but she got in constant fights with her dad. After she became homeless, she was house jumping, also known as floating. She was homeless for one and a half years. She decided to do what was best for her and stayed with whoever she could feel comfortable with while finishing high school. And after working several jobs, she became a guest service attendant at Target, which, is, which was enough for her to move into an apartment and live. Since she left, she has never been happier. She looks forward to every day that happens and she doesn't regret anything that she's done because it made her become who she is currently. Now, usually at this point, presentations stop, you know, had fun, but it doesn't stop because we move on to my story. Um, so, in the beginning, I was never on the side of the road homeless. I was displaced in 2015 uh, we were renting out an average four bedroom, two, two bath house, complete with a yard, backyard, and everything you could like imagine for a regular suburban home. We lived in between Baldwin Elementary and Vernell Intermediate School, so like literally right in the middle, if you guys know where those two schools are. And one day our landlord came over to our house, broke the lease, and told us we had two months to move out. Now for most of you guys, two months is plenty of time to find another house. You know, you can just find any house that fits within your budget and move in. Before we continue, this was my house. If you guys go down, if any of you guys know where the street Moselle is, you'll find this house. Um, four bed, two bath. It felt like it was taken from us suddenly, you know, our home. Um, we were on section eight, however. And does, how many of you guys know what section eight is? One, two, three. That's it. That's what our state is. So, a little info on section eight. So, when you pay taxes, per all of you, a certain amount goes into federal funded programs such as section eight. When you signed up for section eight, they assigned you a set number of rooms you can live in. If you have. <laughs> If you have six people living in your house, you're gonna have a three bedroom house. More le or more people, more house or more bedrooms you guys need. They also choose your payment limits. So let's say I found a house for a three bedroom house that was twenty two hundred dollars. They would only pay for about nineteen hundred of it. Um, they would pay sixty percent of the nineteen hundred, and I would pay the difference between nineteen hundred and twenty one hundred. You know, that's just an example. Oh. You want to get that same student speaking? Mr. Wilson's class student speaking. No, this is a student speaking. <laughs> yes. Of course you can, one second. Is this Mr. Wilson? No, it's a student speaking. Yeah, no. yeah, I'm Mr. Wilson speaking. All right. I'm going to hand it to you. I'm doing okay. All right. So now, let me just tell you right now, 
Section 8 is a big help for people who can't afford to live on their own. You know, especially when I have two deaf parents who can't really get jobs or get houses. Okay. Section Can 8 I is like... Can I get back to you on that uh, <coughs> at, at lunch? Because I, I do have some presentations right now. Yeah. Um, let, me come, let me come back for now where you can call me. Or we'll catch up here in tutorial, okay? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mr. Wilson. That's okay. Anyway. So yeah, Section 8 helps a lot. So for about a year and a half, my family was homeless. Um, we were unable to find homes that accept, accepted Section 8. Currently, if you were to go on Zillow and type in houses that have the description Section 8 in all of San Jose, you would find two houses that have been on there since 2014 that the owners forgot to take off Zillow. I called them already and you know they just forgot to take it off. So yeah, no houses in San Jose currently are available or except Section 8, which makes finding a home super difficult for my family. Um, my mom and siblings moved in, to, moved in with my mom's mom. She had disowned me. Um, I currently do not, and she literally held a funeral for me due to my homosexuality. So I, had, I couldn't move in with her. She did not want me. She said, "If it's fine if the kids and my mom moved in, but my dad and me, she didn't want. So we moved in with my dad's mom. Oh, I forgot I did some animation for this. Is that cute? Oh. Cool. So what about school? The following school year, I was administered into the McKinney Bento program. Um, what this does is, I don't know if you guys got that email a couple weeks ago about how the flood affected our, you know, the people at the school and stuff and the resources available and how we could apply for the McKinney Bento program. I did that, but this was before the flood happened and obviously a year and a half ago. Um, it allowed me and my siblings to stay at the school that we wanted to go to, you know, which was our home school. For me, that was Santa Teresa. For them, that was Baldwin and Burnell. They were able to um, reimburse us for gas, which was a big thing. It was like 80 cents per mile that we drove, which is a lot, but it only paid for us from to and from school. So if we had to stop by the grocery store, it didn't count. Um, it gave us free school lunches, no matter what. I didn't even have to fill out an application, I just got them. It allowed for functions to happen at the district office. You know, like during Christmas, we'd go in and they'd give us a bunch of presents, free dental exams, free medical exams, you know, free school supplies, things like that. You know, it was, it was nice. It was nice to have help. But then, fun animations, nice Christmas present. On December 25th, 2015, my parents got a phone call saying that Section 8 had approved a house in Sunnyvale, an uh, apartment in Sunnyvale. Um, it was a two bedroom apartment, not room enough, not enough room for all of us to live there. So I decided to stay with my grandmother. We didn't care. We were just tired of living on the street. We almost lost our Section 8 because they said, if you don't find a house soon, we're kicking you off the program. So we found some, or we found a house, we were able to stay on the Section 8 program. Again, I stayed there. Uh, about a year later, we were offered a three bedroom house and due to a loophole in Section 8, we actually were paying less money for the three bedroom house than the two bedroom house. Which, you know, super cool, you can't pass that up. I still live with my grandmother because she's close to the school and I don't want to drive from Sunnyvale to here because I hate traffic with a burning passion. Um, I see my family a couple times a month. Nice little animation. There was an origami animation, but didn't go through because Mr. Wilson has like a old PowerPoint thing. Anyway, do we regret anything that happens? None of us do. Since the incident, we've grown together as a family. We have 
learned about each other. Um, we now know the legal steps which we could take. For example, the landlord is not allowed to break your lease without a lawyer present. They didn't do that, which is highly illegal. And to this day, we could sue them. But we decided to let bygones be bygones. Um, we learned how to adapt to any situation. You know, all these situations that happened for that year and a half were just kind of thrown at us last second. You know, like, imagine being in elementary school, hanging out on the playground, and having a rubber ball just fly out of nowhere and hit you in the face. Except it happens every day. It wasn't, we learned how to adapt. So after all that, I just wanna say, you know, I wanna give a special thanks to a couple of people who really helped me out when I was going through all that. So first off, we have Mr. Louie. He gave me the resources that we needed. He gave me, you know, all this information that I didn't know we could have. You know, he sent letters to the food stamp program to see if we can get approved for food, food stamps. He helped a lot. Uh, Miss Davis, she made sure that I was able to get in the classes that I needed to graduate. Um, she was able to give me some scholarship options that I could apply for. You know, just really great stuff. Alvin Jackson. Hey, you changed it, Mr. Wilson. Cool. Yeah. I accidentally put Alvin. Anyway, Alvin Jackson, do you guys know who that is? Yeah, most of you do. He's over in the Student Family Center. He's a super cool guy. He helped me get my mind off of it a lot, which honestly helped a lot. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for his, him getting my mind off things. Rose Ortiz, she, if any of you guys transferred from a different school district, She's the one you talk to. She was the one who suggested the McKinney Vento program. And then last we had Barbara Sutton. She actually does the same thing that Rose Ortiz does, but for the Oak Grove School District. And she was the one who helped us with the gas reimbursement, the free lunches, the potatoes, the potatoes, the whatever. You know, so these five people are a big influence on me today. And that's the end of that.